Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome to the Beam Rider yeah, the Beam Rider Torpedo Guide by myself. So what you are looking at right now is a tur getting blown to pieces bit by bit by an infinitesimally cheaper ship, and it's all due to the magic of beam riding torpedoes, which I have cleverly deduced with my brain are very hard to counter. Because, as you might have seen in my previous video on torpedo defense, most of the reliable ways of dealing with torpedoes are specifically against acoustic torpedoes, sonar torpedoes. So, how do you... What then is the question is like, okay, say something has incredibly good torpedo defense, like the Tur, for instance, it has sonar decoys which it lobs into the ocean, and it has a very scary lamp system. What do you do? Well, the answer is you use beam riders, and you use them to guide your torpedoes. So, as you can see right here, the lamp system on the Tur is not firing at these torpedoes right here, and you can tell roughly in the middle that little weird thing with backwards pointing little red prongs is the beam rider and these torpedoes are sailing through and hitting it right in its soft squishy mass produced underbelly and on the other side the torpedo popper turret that I showed off in my torpedo defense video is making short work of the Tur's own torpedo barrage which is really really nice so this is basically the live fire demonstration bit of this video with an incredibly loud lamp system. I am just really happy that I've managed to make a video that, well, not a video, what's the point I'm saying? A vehicle that can go one-on-one -on -one with a tur and actually win. And not only that, be a lot cheaper than a tur. So sooner or later the tur is going to die. Which probably means we should get to the specifics of how beam riding torpedoes work. Now, I sure as cookies am not the first one to think of this kind of thing. But I did manage to figure it out, like, by myself, which is, I don't know, I get a mild pat on the back for that. So, this is the most recent submarine I've built. I mentioned in previous videos showing off the Marina Iguana that uh, I need to build a new submarine, and I have. It's much better. It's designed from the ground up to be a submarine, and to be perfectly honest, you could probably convert this into an airship with very little trouble. So, what is its name? It is the Kula, and no, that is not a Dragon Ball Z reference. It is a reference to a giant extinct amphibian, which apparently behaved like a crocodile. And I only called it that because it's got a wide flat head, or well, four wide flat heads, which is approximately four more than the real animal had, but in any case, just a quick little tour of the submarine. It's controlled through rotors. It has a pair of deadly blades in the front, one to pull the nose down if it gets too high up out of the water, and the other one to lift it up if it goes too deep. It has virtually identical ones on the sides that help keep it steady in the water. It's just, it's again, it's altitude controlled, so one side dips down too much, this rotor will bring it up, and dips down to, goes too high, this will pull it down, works quite nicely, and it's got one more altitude rotor in the back to bring the bum up in case it starts. Well, because you don't want this thing to, like, spear out of the water like crazy, right, but case, that's the, how it works, the propulsion, lots of propellers, it's got a formidable array of torpedo interceptors, it can, well, it was, well, there was a minor snafu just before recording, I tested this and it couldn't, uh, it couldn't, that was my phone, please excuse that, and it couldn't deal with a turret full barrage, I just tweaked the staggered timing on these missiles and then they worked, so that's nice. And here we get to the main event, which is the Beam Riders. Now, the laser emitters I have on this is set to vehicles missiles only, and that's important. It has four of these, and they're spaced quite widely, because you want as many beams as possible so these things don't get lost. Because the way 
a beam rider works is where is it on the list? Here, beam rider. This backwards facing laser receiver will follow the beam with a missile laser block. Blah 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 blah. So in other words, it's got when the torpedo or missile, I guess, is in the water, this points backwards. It looks at where the laser currently is and steers it so it'll meet the end point. Which means it well, which means that if the laser is, say, if it was pointing that way and then suddenly is pointing that way, if it's more than 30 degrees away from the torpedo, it will lose it. Which means, the counter that, you just have lots of them. Two emitters on either side pretty much doubles the chance that the torpedo will not get lost. Or I should rather say half the chance that it will. And... For the torpedoes themselves, these ones are fairly big, there's a few fins, APM guidance. The only reason this is on here is because I really like the smooth sidewinding motion it makes. And it increases the accuracy of it just a tiny bit. Two propellers, so it's not super fast. Regulator, so it stays in the water a long time. Probably don't need that, might switch it out for another fin. And there's the receiver, ballast tanks, and then our megaton of warheads. Uh, on one turret it's half explosive, half AMP, well roughly half, and then there's this. This is the other benefit to using a beam rider, is you get to use the thumper head. Da -da -da. Increases the missile's health by a factor of 2.5. That isn't really relevant because, because I don't think there's any kind of interceptor or lambs that can detect a beam rider. Like, the munition defense doesn't work underwater and passive sonar only detects things with an active torpedo sonar. So this thing can't really be detected by, well, anything really. The laser can, de detect, can get detected and that's another reason for why the beam rider is so good is because the regular old laser designator will get fooled by smoke. If you have a laser emitter and these things have laser designated receivers, just the regular ones that go on the front of the missile. When this points at a target, which then activates smoke, because this is a laser, laser warning systems can be triggered by it. And you might notice that the, 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 the cooler itself, its own laser is triggering the warning system, which is kind of dumb and I don't actually care enough to fix it. But in any case, the laser will be unable to guide the target if the target is smoked and you're using a laser guidance system. Not if you're using a laser designator, because it points backward at the laser, see, the laser is going off into the middle distance, the torpedo will be looking back at the laser from the origin point, at the emitter itself, and so the fact that the where the laser is pointing shrouded in smoke, it doesn't bother it in the least, it'll go straight through it, which means it is fantastic against craft like the Tur that you would have seen just now, which have both really good laser defense and passive sonar and like just general acoustic torpedo defense. It just it ignores it completely. So that's ver numerous benefits to using this. And because it's laser laser guided, you can use it with a aim point selection, which I don't usually use. Even with these it's still a pain in the butt. If there's a bit of ammunition or AI work or if there's an AI in the right in the bow or the stern of a craft these torpedoes can miss I can probably I could probably fix that by putting more fins or something on them but I'll need to experiment more with that but what was I gonna say oh yeah so I should probably get to the disadvantages of these things the first one is that on a submarine Particularly with this one, detection the detection systems aren't really that good, they're not accurate. So if you look here, sonar 90 degrees, angular error is about 0.5, 360 is 1, passive sonar is pretty bad, rangefinder tracker is okay, I guess, and also have a wireless snooper, which is, ri well, ridiculously bad at detecting things. Like, Honestly, like, why ha do I even have these on the turrets? But you can't use the more accurate ones. Like, look at this. The angular bearing, the error, the bearing error for a telescope is tiny. It's 0.05. You can't use these underwater. 
you can't use coincidence rangefinders, and you can't use gimbal trackers. So these little lasers are not as accurate as they could be if they were above the water. So I have done this on a submarine. It might actually be a better idea to use this kind of torpedo on a surface vessel. Like. Just a regular ship would probably do the trick, because, like, a fast flyer would probably cause the beams to lose their... the torpedoes to lose tracking, because the laser will be too far away from them. And... Basically, what that means is that on a submarine, these things are only good at medium to short range. When I was just prototyping this craft, I was trying to make a long-range craft, as I usually do with everything I build. And it just wasn't working so well. And the lasers are just not very accurate at very long range. And it wasn't made any better by my little stabilizing system I mentioned earlier. Right here, you can show you right there. These have very little motor drive, only one. That's so the damn thing doesn't rock back and forth in the water. Because before, when I was testing it, this thing was rocking like a newlywed couple's bed on the honeymoon. So, that wasn't working, and you might not be able to tell because these lasers are... This thing is rocking very slightly, just a little bit. But, and it doesn't look like the lasers are moving that much. You go off in the distance, look how much that is bouncing. It is bouncing a lot, and you go way over here... It's almost doing circles around the camera. It's like so wonky. So, you need a steady craft, and that's a general rule for anything using laser guidance for missiles, is that you need a steady craft for this. It does not work on something that rocks around and bounces around violently. Which is a problem for me, because most of my craft twerk like mad. But the payoff is, in fact, worth it, I believe. Because just the fact that this thing is dirt cheap, it's 43,000, and it's almost immune to acoustic torpedoes, not entirely. It can still get hit by one out of, like, a serious torpedo swarm. But it is highly resistant to acoustic torpedoes, even though it's got very little armor, just because these fantastic little torpedo interceptors. And it can kill things with torpedoes that otherwise would not be able to be killed with torpedoes. And to demonstrate that one more time, we're going to throw in a spectre. Hopefully the thing isn't too close. It's way too close. It is 600 meters away. My little guy's probably going to die. But that's okay, I believe. No, it's not okay. We're going to get torpedoed. No, we're not. Okay, awesome. We we're still gonna get torpedoed. Yep, there we go. So short range does not mean that short. Well, that was silly. But in any case, I have not in that. You can see here the spectres being smoked. Doesn't matter a bit. The torpedoes are still en route. And I'm going to just politely turn my avatar's repair tentacles back on. And hopefully that'll help. Off they go. Mustn't get distracted by torpedo defenses. Awesome though they be. We And you see, these things just roll back and forth. And miss. That is a major disadvantage of these, is that it really depends on the detection system, and even at this range, the lasers are bouncing around a lot. And this is why I am perpetually irritated that you cannot control more accurately the what parts of an enemy ship your craft target, because it's aiming for the stern, which means it's missing a lot. But in any case... The cooler is surviving a lot better than it would be, and it is actually targeting a lot better than it would be, because you see these are the sonar de be no, these sonar decoys? It's ignoring them. The torpedoes are bloody inaccurate, and that's really irritating. But they're not being fooled. Like, 
You can't fool me, only I can fool me, apparently. And we're still getting destroyed. That wasn't perhaps the best demonstration, so I'm just going to spawn in another one. Because I hate the Spectre and it deserves to die. And that was my phone again. I really need to turn that thing off. Okay, I am going to turn you off. Shut up. Okay, so that was a rather quick and I believe rather silly demonstration of Beam Rider torpedoes and how they can be... Oh my god, game, stop proving me wrong! Stop proving me wrong, that's so annoying! It's just the angle's bad as well. Yeah, shrug that off. So anyway... Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. What are you doing, sir? Why are you so close? Why are you driving straight at him, you weirdo? Well, on that note, farewell!